Hi, this is Kendrick with worldmedicalschool.org. We're going to talk about OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. So this affects around 2 to 3% of Americans. Um, and uh, the most famous case that people talk about is, uh, is uh, Howard Hughes. I don't know if anybody saw the movie The Aviator, but it, it really shows a lot of this pathology and uh, how it affects, how affected his life. But um, the basic presentation is just people with obsessions or compulsions that lead to significant uh, impairment. And an obsession is uh, characterized by persistent, unwanted thoughts. So these uh, these people don't want to think about these things constantly, but they can't get them out of their mind. A lot of times they feel really guilty about what they're thinking about, especially if, uh, if they're thinking about death or sex. Some of them have um, pretty disturbed thoughts about sex, including incest and rape. Uh, a lot of people have kind of blasphemous religious ideas if they are religious, they think about uh, uh, blasphemous things, uh, cursing God and and uh, doing uh, blasphemous things at church or during other religious services. That people say that Martin Luther had uh, obsessive compulsive disease, and he kind of was obsessed with uh, the devils behind. I don't know uh, where they got that, but uh, it's pretty interesting. And then the compulsion side is the irre irresistible impulse to perform an act. So a lot of times these are going to be associated with the obsession. You know, if they're obsessed with cleanliness, for example, then their compulsion will be to constantly clean their clean their hands, and that uh, that act or that ritual will help them to relieve some of the anxiety that is caused by their obsession. Some of these compulsions, though, are not related to the obsession. They can just be uh, completely uh, unrelated compulsions. But a lot of these uh, include, um, for example, uh, sex again, hoarding. Um, oh, one thing I thought was interesting about obsessions that I missed is uh, the hoarders sometimes feel like uh, these inanimate objects have uh, rights and that they cannot be thrown away because of the, the rights that they have. And they, they know that's illogical, but they, they still do it anyway, and they feel like they have to do it. Um, it presents in late adolescence and early childhood most of the time, but equal in men and women, and uh, it's usually pretty resistant to treatment. So on your differential dis diagnosis, a lot of people talk about uh, OCD um, in the way that really uh, describes uh, OCPD, which, uh, let's see, for example, uh, people say, oh, I'm so OCD about this. And a lot of times they're, they're really kind of bragging about uh, their... Uh, their commitment to order or uh, the religious way that they do something. But the real difference here is that uh, somebody with uh, OCD would not be bragging about their disorder. They, uh, they, feel, they feel bad about it a lot of times. They feel anxious about it. It causes significant impairment in their life. Now, some people who say they're OCD... Uh, means they mean that they really uh, are careful about their work whereas obsessive compulsive disorder they are um, they are careful about something enough that it would destroy their work you know they wouldn't be able to get anything done because they're focusing on one uh, one specific thing so the so the obsessive compulsive personality disorders they're usually, they usually feel pretty good about their obsessions and their compulsions, and it's not nearly as destructive as the OCD. So first-line treatment 
is described in some sources as being pharmacotherapy. Some studies have shown that CBT is actually more effective than pharmacotherapy, at least in patients that don't have comorbid conditions. And there's a specific site, uh, type of CBT, which is cognitive, cognitive behavioral therapy, um, called ERP, which is... Um, Oh, I just had just had it in my mind. Um, ERP means. Um, hold on, let's see if we can find it. Sorry, this is really okay. Exposure and ritual prevention. So, the um, and yes, I did just look up a Wikipedia page, but I'm also using other sources as well um so exposure <laughs> exposure and ritual prevention is the specific type of cbt that uh, helps with ocd and pharmacotherapy ssris are first line uh, clomipramine is also used um, and uh, as far as antipsychotics go you can use uh, risperidone Haloperidol, and some of the others that there ha hasn't been as much research on. But these are more for the refractory cases or the cases that have a psychotic element to them. And back to presentation, there, there are a lot of these that uh, are hard to differentiate from psychosis just because there is, uh, there are their beliefs about these uh, obsessions or their compulsions can be just delusional enough to to be confused with psychosis so it can be a little bit of a fine line but as far as the the uh, dsm-4 criteria go basically if you have these obsessions and compulsions if you have a disease that is uh, characterized by impairment um, because of obsessions and compulsions um, they call it OCD, unless uh, you meet all the criteria for uh, schizophrenia or, or other uh, diagnoses. ECT is also used, and patient education can be helpful as well. Uh, please uh, comment below and help us to make these uh, videos better. And if you want to do other things uh, to volunteer, you can email us at volunteer at worldmedicalschool.org. We could use uh, any type of uh, designer, programmer, as well as anybody with medical knowledge to help compile these videos. That would be much appreciated. Thank you.